Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On, King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The challenge of the Yukon. Hello. Hi, Chuck. You bet I've heard the news. I'll say I've heard about the new Quaker model farm. I've started building mine already. Boy, talk about fun. Listen, fellas and girls, hurry. Don't miss out. You, too, can have a swell, complete miniature model farm. Yes, you can get as many as 46 different detail scale models in all, at no extra cost. Models of farm buildings and farm animals. Yes, you can actually stock your farm with animals. Have your own model Shetland pony. What's more, these key new models are yours today without any delay. There's nothing to send in, there's no waiting. In just a few minutes, you'll hear how you can get a complete, exciting Quaker model farm for your very own. Keep listening. No one believed Tex Richards when he announced that Rosa Cavallari was coming to Dawson. And when the most famous singer in the world actually did walk down the gangplank of the Margaret O, the town went wild. Tex finally succeeded in conducting Rosa to her rooms. And even then, he found it hard to believe his good fortune. Well, you're, you're really here, Rosa. See, I am really here, Tex. Now, why did you come? Because you asked me. You were waiting for an invitation, I suppose. I will tell you the truth. I wanted to go to Cuba to sing for Colonel Roosevelt's Rough Riders, but the president, he would not let me. He said the country was too dangerous. Oh. I say, I will prove to you La Cavalleria is no hothouse orchid. My friend Tex Richards has asked me to sing at Dawson, and I will. And that is the whole story. Do you believe it, Tex? Well, it sounds like you, but... I'll bet there's some other reason in that fine Italian brain of yours. Perhaps I came here because I wanted to see someone. Who? You. Oh, that I don't believe. All right. But now I am serious. There are three people I wish to see here, and you must arrange it for me. The first is a young man named Richard Starr. Do you know him? Sure. The second is a sergeant with the Northwest Mounted Police. His name is Preston. You know him as well. Of course. But why? A friend does not ask questions of another friend, Tex. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, the third man is Bradford White. Yeah, I know him, too. Now, I don't like him. Oh, you have good taste. Excuse me, I'll see who it is. Hello, Tex. Why, hello, Dick. I have a present for Madame Cavallari. <laughs> May I see her? Why... Well, sure, I reckon you can. Come on in. Oh, thanks. Uh, Rosa, th this is Richard Starr. Kismet, I am very happy to meet you, senor. Uh, so am I, Madame Cavallari. I, uh... In behalf of the citizens of Dawson, I wish to present you with a slight token of our regard. I... <laughs> Here. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> What is it? Oh, it's a nugget. Gold. Oh, sure. And so large. Oh, Mr. Starr, as an artist who thinks always of her bank account, I am deeply touched. <laughs> oh, we thought maybe you might like it. Oh, what woman wouldn't? 
No, really, it is a very charming gesture, and I thank you so very much. Well, that's perfectly all right. May I ask how it happens that you were elected to make the presentation? Well, we we uh, drew lots, and I won. Ah, I am happy you did. Are you a prospector? Mm, no, not exactly. I, I was, but now I'm the president of the Yukon Development Company. Well, that sounds very important. You are so young to be a president. <laughs> well, it isn't my fault. Uh, I mean, it isn't because I'm especially smart. Bradford White's the real brains behind the company, and he gave me the job because, well, he's an old friend of my father's. Mm, it's very interesting. But you must come and see me often during my stay in Dawson. <laughs> you can bet I will. Oh, thank you again. <laughs> sure thing. I. Uh, goodbye, madam. Arrivederci, Richard. Hey, uh, is that all you wanted to say to him? But I had nothing to say. There was nothing I could say. I merely wanted to see him. A handsome boy. Yeah. And good, too. Yeah, nice kid. And now it is Sergeant Preston's turn. Will you ask him to call on me tonight? Oh, he's a pretty busy man, but uh, I think he'll be able to make it for you, Rosa. I will go to headquarters if that is necessary. Oh, no, he'll be here. Tell him to bring King, Tex. I have heard so much about his wonderful dog. Why, sure, sure. They'll both be here right after dinner. The Sergeant and King did accept Madame Cavalieri's invitation. And she welcomed them to her living room that evening. She patted King. He is everything people say, Sergeant. He is a beautiful dog. And his eyes, they are so kind and trusting. I like dogs. In fact, the more I see of men, the more I think of dogs. Oh, is there some particular reason for that remark? See, uh, sit down, please. Thank you. It is a matter of business. I happen to know, Sergeant, that you are making a special investigation at the present moment. Really? Where do you get your information? From the same place where you received your orders. From the government, not one. I see. It concerns the Yukon Development Company. My report is already on its way to Ottawa. I'm sorry I can't talk about it. I know what is in the report. The company is a swindle. Everyone who has invested in it will lose their money. Are you an investor? I have a certain interest. It concerns the people involved more than the money. I'm not free to talk about it. We will speak in general terms. The courts will try to fix the responsibility for this embezzlement, this stealing. That is true, is it not? That's true. And young Richard Starr will go to jail. Madame Cavallari... I know, I know you do not have to answer. I can't. Your face, your expression is answer enough. There is not one bit of evidence to connect Bradford White with this great fraud. I take it your personal interest is in Dick Starr. Uh, see. Why? Were you told nothing about the boy? A little. He comes from New York. His father was interested in railroads. He lost all of his money, and shortly afterwards he was killed in a hunting accident. Richard Starr's father was Bradford White's partner until White deserted him. And his death was no accident. I gather there was some talk of suicide. Why not call it murder? Was there no mention in your dossier of Richard Starr's mother? She was... She was Italian. Si. She disappeared when the boy was quite young. He was three years old. He does not remember her at all. He thinks she is dead. Isn't she, Madame Cavallari? There is an accusation in your eyes. It is a poor mother who leaves her baby. But if she is a simple peasant girl, if everybody hates her, if they take away her baby, if even they kill her husband's love, what then, sir? You blame her so much. No, I don't. I, I sympathize. And if the chance comes to help, to protect her Madam son... Madame Cavallari, I sympathize, but there is no chance. There's absolutely no way in which Bradford White can be connected with the operations of the Yukon Development Company. 
He's covered his tracks completely. Every paper's been signed by Richard Starr, and Richard Starr alone. But you are kind. You have answered me at last. I'm sorry that my news is so bad. But I guessed it. And I tell you here and now, Sergeant, that Bradford White will not live to enjoy his stolen money. I'm going to forget you said that. See, as you wish. The case hasn't come to trial yet. There's still a possibility that I can find some evidence against White. Now, please leave it to me. Believe me, I'll do everything I can to help your son. But Rosa Cavallari didn't leave it to the sergeant. She sent a message to Bradford White through text, and White knocked on the door of her suite the following evening. Madam Cavallari. Come in. Come in. It is Mr. White. Yes, I'm honored. But that is because you do not remember me. Well, I, I've heard you sing in New York. I will not waste time. My concert begins in less than an hour. Bradford, I am Mrs. Roger Starr. Uh, what? Yes. <laughs> the little Italian girl you used to laugh at. What are you doing? I am locking the door. And as you see, I have here a gun. Rosa. I am going to kill you, Bradford, unless you follow my orders to the letter. Oh, you are insane. Oh, no. I will kill you and I will plead self-defense. There is no jury that will convict me. Now walk over to that table and sit down. What, what do you want me to do? Hurry. Uh, all right. Uh, what? There is pen and ink there. I want a complete confession. A confession of what? A confession that you and you alone are responsible for the operations of the Yukon Development Company. That it was your worthless land that was bought with the investor's money. And that all of that money is now in your pocket. I want a confession that Richard Starr is nothing but a poor, unknowing instrument of your infamy. No, no, I... I won't write any such thing. Then I will shoot, Bradford. Oh. I will shoot you straight through the heart. Now write the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, or... Or you will never, never leave this room alive. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Fellas and girls, listen. <laughs> Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice are offering you a complete new miniature model farm. Boy, you get swell models right on all new packages. Yes, anyone can build these exciting models of farm buildings, equipment, and animals simply by getting new packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. You get as many as 16 models on a single package. And there are eight different packages with 46 detailed scale models in all. And say, they don't cost a single extra penny. Just look at all the models on package number one alone. You get your own farmhouse and your own model watchdog. That's Queenie the Collie. Other model animals on package number one include Dobbin the Horse and Bossy the Cow. And you get a garage and a pickup truck. What's more, these models are easy to build. All packages are pre-cut and scored. Assembling is a cinch. No paste or glue is necessary. Gee, look at that big red barn on package number three. It's got a sliding door. Other farm buildings have windows and doors that open and close. What fun you'll have with this Quaker model farm. Best of all, you can start building these models right away. There's no waiting, nothing to send in. All you do is get the new model farm packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Wheat or rice shot from guns is my favorite cereal. What could be better? These models now come right on the packages. Remember, there are eight different packages, 46 swell models in all, and they come only with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So get busy. Start your Quaker model farm right away. It couldn't be easier. There's no waiting, no extra cost. Simply go to your grocer and ask for the new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. (laughs) 
Now to continue our story. When Bradford White left Rosa Cavallari's suite, she had his confession. It was time for her concert, and she locked the paper in her jewel case before hurrying to the opera house. The concert was a gala affair. The men starved for entertainment roared their approval of every song, and Rosa sang many of them. Her audience listened in rapt silence, transported from this bleak, barren country that tried men's souls back to their homes, to cities, villages, and farms, back to the lives they once knew with their loved ones. Rosa stepped forward to the footlights and spoke the last words of one of her songs. Then you'll remember, you'll remember me. She touched her lips with her hands, and with tears in their eyes, the miners thundered their applause. (laughs) But suddenly a sharp cry. A cry that rose above the cheers. Fire! Get out of here! Wait! Take it easy, men! Calm down! You got plenty of time to leave the theater... It's the building next door that's burning. Now, why be in a hurry? As soon as you get outside, Sergeant Preston will put you to work on the bucket brigade. That's it, that's it. Now, take it easy. Are you telling the truth, Tex? The theater is not on fire? It will be in a little while. We don't want any panic in here, though. There's time for everybody to get out safely. Ah, but I am not afraid. I am only wondering why, if the fire is next door, it cannot be controlled. There's a strong wind blowing from the southwest, and the sparks are landing on this here roof now. Come on, we'll go out the back way. Fire was a terrible word in Dawson. It was a city of wood and canvas. The buildings were close together, and when the Chinook was blowing, the warm, dry wind from the southwest, it was almost impossible to keep a fire from spreading. There was no firefighting equipment yet, and every available man was mustered into the bucket brigade. Outside the opera house, Tex and Rosa watched Sergeant Preston directing their efforts. Head markets, men! Come into the line down to the river! No chance of saving the star of the cabin! I will try to hold this fire! Tex, Hurry. I must speak to him! What about? There is something I must tell him. I will only be a moment. All right. Over here! Sergeant! Madam, this is no place for you. Oh, see, I will keep out of the way. I only wanted to this tell way. you This that... way! Go on, I'm listening. I have Bradford White's confession. Confession? How'd you get it? I pointed a gun at him and threatened to shoot. It won't work. But why not? Over there! Chop down that wall! A confession won't work. They'll say you forced him to make it and retract on the witness stand. He has promised to make retribution. What? Yes, and I have promised not to use the confession if he returns all the money he has stolen. That is what the investors want, and it will save Richard. I'll talk to you later. Go down to headquarters and wait for me there, please. Very well. That's right, men. One of the ladders against the wall here, and the other around in back. we got to get water to that roof. The men worked frantically under the sergeant's supervision, but the combination of wind and fire were too much for them. The opera house burst into flames. The wind increased in violence, and the sparks sailed far down the main street. The sergeant was forced to assign squads of men to put out the spot fires. What's that yelling about, Dick? It's those men down in front of my office. The building's on fire. Yeah. Dick! Dick, stop! Yeah, yeah, here I am with Sergeant Preston. We can't save your office. It's going to burn to the ground. I got all the papers and gold out. I knew it'd go. You what? Yeah, yeah, 15 minutes ago. I went in and I got... White just ran in there to get your gold. He's going to be killed. Come on, King. The sergeant and King sprinted down the street to the office of the Yukon Development Company and pushed their way through the crowd of men who were vainly trying to stop the flames. The front of the building was burning fiercely, but the fire had not reached the back yet, and the sergeant and king ran around there. The sergeant knocked out a window. Then he climbed through, and king jumped in after him. I can't see, king. Find him for me. King led the way through the smoke until the sergeant saw Bradford White. He was lying on the ground, pinned down by a smoldering beam. All I can do to lift this timber, king, when I lift it up, drag him free. (laughs) Grab hold, king. Pull him. Pull him, Great dog obeyed his master's command. His jaws firmly clamped on the shoulder of White's coat. He called on all his strength and pulled him from underneath the beam. When he was clear, the sergeant dropped the timber. I'll get him now, King. Out the back way. Dick Starr and another man were waiting outside the back window. The sergeant handed White through to them. Then he and King climbed out. Where should we carry him, Sergeant? Down to headquarters. Doc Munson's there. <laughs> Will he live? I don't know. Only the doc can save him. Okay. We'll get him there fast. Come on, King. <laughs> Hair singed and grimy with soot, the sergeant returned to his job. The opera house was a great torch now, roaring toward the sky. 
the sergeant was forced to send men into Second Street to fight the spot fires there. The main line of the flame was like a modern army, advancing with mechanized speed and harrying the defending troops by dropping paratroopers in their rear. The sergeant, as the defending general, realized that a strategic retreat was necessary. To save the greater part of the town, he must sacrifice some of it. Tex, come here. Yeah. What is it, Sergeant? Where's Jack Whitney? He got burned. He went down to headquarters to get his hand bandaged. Is everybody out of the Palace Hotel? Sure. We'll have to dynamite it. What? The Palace? We can't save it, Tex. If we blast it to the ground, the fire won't jump the gap. I'd like to have Whitney's permission. You want me to go? No, Tex, I'll do it. You get the dynamite and set it. If the fire gets too close to the hotel before I get back, set off the charge without waiting for me. Okay. Joe! Al, Tully, come with me, down to the warehouse. The sergeant and King ran down the main street to headquarters. They found it crowded with the casualties of the fire. Dick Starr came up to them. Sergeant. Sergeant. Doc couldn't save him. Who? Who do you mean? Bradford White. I see. In that case, his confession is the only thing that... Where's Madame Cavallari, Dick? I don't know. She was here just a minute ago. Find her for me, will you? <laughs> I'll do my best. Sergeant, uh, how's it going? Our only chance is to dynamite the Palace Hotel, Inspector. Dick just told me that Bradford White's dead. I know. Poor Dick. He doesn't realize that with White gone, there's no chance of proving who was really behind the Yukon Development Company. It's all right, Inspector. All right. Adam Cavallari has a signed confession from White. Now we can't retract it. Dick won't go to jail. A signed confession? Yes, I thought you might have given it to you, sir. No. Oh, Sergeant? Sergeant? Madame Cavallari isn't here. Where is she? Oh, I don't know. She was standing right beside Doc Munson when Brad died. Uh, look, here's a, here's a scarf she was wearing over her head. I found it near the door. Inspector? Yes? She knew White was dead. She knew the confession was our only proof she didn't have it with her. Are you sure? No, sir, I'm guessing. But if she left it at the palace, she's gone back for it. Give me that scarf, Dick. Oh, sure. Monking. Great clouds of smoke were rolling over the Palace Hotel when the sergeant and King arrived. But the fire hadn't reached it yet. The sergeant looked for Tex and the dynamite crew. They hadn't returned from the warehouse. The sergeant and King fought their way through the smoke and into the hotel. The smoke was just as thick inside the building. It's a good thing we know the layout, King. <coughs> Come on. Up the stairs, boy. Here we are, King. The door's locked. I have to break it in. Let him cavalry. The darkness and the smoke made it impossible to see. But the sergeant still carried the scarf which Rosa had worn. He held it down to King. Find her, boy. Lead me to her. Where is she? King led his master through the first room, the second, and into the third. This was Rosa's bedroom. And King headed straight for her dressing table. But he paused only for an instant. Then he turned toward the door that opened from the bedroom into the corridor. All right, boys, go on. King started for the back of the building. And there, at the head of the stairs that led down to the kitchen, the sergeant saw the figure of a woman lying on the floor. Madam Cavallari. Madam. Sergeant, rest. I'll get you out of here. The suitcase. Where is it? You dropped it. When I fell, never mind about me, find it. Bradford White is dead. His confession is the only thing that can save Richard. The paper is in the case. It must be somewhere down the stairs. It's the way we're going. As the sergeant lifted Madame Cavallari in his arms and started down the stairs, a strange thing happened. King, the dog who always stayed as close as possible to his master's side, suddenly broke away from him. Outside, Tex and his crew were setting the dynamite under the foundations of the hotel and attaching the fuse. Hurry it up, Joe. The south end of the hotel is burning now. Aren't you going to wait for the sergeant to get back? No, he told me to go ahead if the fire got too close. <coughs> and it's not only too close, it's here. How are you coming? Another second and I'll have it. How long shall I make the fuse? Five feet enough. <coughs> the smoke's getting me. All set? Yeah. Now, here's the end of the fuse. Take it back. Got it. Come on. Now, I'm with you. <coughs> the smoke. You sure there's nobody in the hotel, Tex? No. They've been out for a long time. Here, I'll stay here and light it. You keep going, Joe. You better run. Five feet won't give you much time to get clear. Don't worry, I'll run. The palace is going to be blown a hundred feet in the air. All right, boys, get back. She's lit. Run for cover. King had forced his way through a partly opened window in the kitchen of the hotel. And at that moment, he rounded the corner of the building, heading for the front. There was no way of telling what went on in King's mind, whether it was reason or some sixth sense that transcended reason. But he saw the sputtering fuse and headed straight for it. He grasped the fuse in his teeth halfway between the burning end and the dynamite charge. 
Savagely, he ripped the fuse apart, and the lit end spluttered harmlessly and went out when the end of the severed line was reached. That's King. What's he done there? He the fuse loose. Come on. What's the matter with the dog, anyway? I thought you had good sense, King. That's the kind of a trick a puppy would pull. He might have been killed, you know that? All right, all right. Get out of the way now. We'll have to attach another fuse. There's only a few feet left of this one. I know. Out of the way, King. I said get out of the way. This is no time to be only... That Sergeant Preston, yeah. Tex and the men turned at the sound of the sergeant's voice and saw him walking toward them through the smoke. He was carrying Rosa Cavallari, and Rosa was hugging her jewel case. Sergeant, have, have you and Rosa been inside the hotel? Si, si, we have. He saved my life, and he also saved this case. It means more to me than my life. You, you were both inside? What's the matter, Tex? Nothing, Sergeant. I just feel a little weak in the knees, that's all. I... I got a mighty big apology to make to King. Huh? What for? Well, you take Rosa down to headquarters. We'll tell you about it later. Shall we... Shall we set off the charge now? Yes, go ahead. This way, King. All right, Joe, let's get that charge ready now. A few minutes later, the new fuse had been attached and lit. The explosion rocked the earth. The Palace Hotel was blown sky high. When it had settled to the ground, there was a gap the fire could not leap. The sergeant returned to his command, and at daybreak, the Dawson fire was history. At headquarters, still black with soot, the sergeant and Dick Starr drank hot coffee. It was then that the Mountie showed Dick the confession Bradford White had signed. But this means that he was a crook, and that everything I did for him was crooked. I'd have gone to prison for it. This paper means that you won't. Oh. It's an awful thing. It's all right now, Dick. He was the only friend I had in the world. Yet he was using me. Dick, Madame Cavallari's in the inspector's office. She has something to tell you. Oh, Madame Cavallari? Yes, I think you'll find that you have another friend. Go on, she's waiting for you. Why? What? All right. Here, King. Here, boy. Here's a sandwich. For his sake, for his mother's sake, and for mine, I want to thank you, fellow. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. Don't forget, get special new model farm packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice pronto. They're at your grocer's now. Think of it. You can actually get 46 colorful models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals. These exciting, easily assembled models come on eight different packages. And they're yours at no extra cost. Don't miss out on the fun. Start building yourself a model farm right away. And don't forget, these exciting models come only with delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're waiting for you now on your grocer's shelves. So hurry. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of The Trap in Cabin 4. The meanest crooks in the world were waiting in a cabin on the trail from Scotch River. King and I went after them, and we never suspected they'd anticipated our arrival and had planted a time bomb in the cabin. We found the bomb, but that was just the beginning of our greatest danger. Be sure to hear this exciting story Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. <laughs>